Okay, completely unrelated, but like, check out my nails. How cool are they? Um, they're holographic and see-through, and I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'll put a clip of it. Nothing to do with the video, I just wanted to show you guys, because I love them. <laughs> So, it's been a couple weeks. How are you? Good. What did you get up to in February? All I did was watch TV, go to the hospital a couple of times, learn to knit and crochet, read a bit of Shakespeare, and then I sketched a few heads. But we're back in business, so let's get right down to it. This painting was supposed to be part of a video that went up the day before Valentine's Day, and it was supposed to be a tutorial on how to paint that beautiful, expensive looking silk that you see in like old baroque renaissance paintings but that's boring well it was fun at the time but looking back at it i cannot bring myself to make that video right now so instead let's do something fun and new that we haven't done together before today we're gonna create some merch together Yes, your girl has a teespring now, or spring as they like to call themselves these days. Um, and today I figured we could go through the entire process of making a painting and then learning how to conform it to their templates. And you know, by the end of this, hopefully we'll have some new merch. I just felt like kicking back with a more chilled out video today, so I hope you enjoy going through this process with me, and if this video inspires you to create some merch, then let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up, and leave a comment below letting me know what merch you create already, slash what you would want to create someday, because I'm really curious to see what you guys do. Subscribe for more art stuff, and check out my Patreon for even more art stuff, but whenever you're ready, let's dive into making some merch together. Okay, so obviously the first step is to create some art to put on the merch. You wouldn't just want to paint a canvas a black colour and put one line on it and hope to sell it for millions, right? Right? Wait, what? Seriously, at what point does it go from an abstract painting to just a straight up scam? Maybe I'm just too unrefined to see it. Anyway, today I want to finish up this painting that's quite literally been weeks in the making. I started working on this in early February and then had to abandon it when life got crazy. If you're confused, I did make two text posts about what happened and I don't want to keep rehashing it over and over again. So if you're curious enough, you can go check those out on my community tab. And like I said, this was originally going to be a video about painting fabric, but more specifically about painting fabric in the style of old baroque art where they have this beautiful expensive looking silk. I also made a joke about how my entire brand is just finding cool things about famous art and then turning them into digital painting tutorials. At first the idea of that felt icky to me, like I'm building my work off of other people's work, but honestly I've decided to lean into it because as a trained scientist this is what I'm best at, taking the established dogma and building upon it. So yeah, if you do want me to make that video about painting clothes in the style of classical artists, let me know in the comments below because I already have the notes for it. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this, I've completely lost track of time and what I have or haven't said in videos, but for 2022 I've been using one word prompts to base my paintings off of. Last year, the one thing I struggled with when it came to art was not knowing what to paint, so I took the time to just eliminate that issue by creating a list of 50 random words, one for each painting this year, and it has honestly helped me get started on painting so much easier. And for this painting, the prompt was basin, and a normal healthy person would immediately think wash basin, but my medieval brain went, ooh, like a giant bowl that you pour from. So here we are with the more archaic understanding of the word basin. Then of course the philosophical part of my brain had to chime in with a quote that I read years ago that said art is standing with one hand extended into the universe and one hand extended into the world and letting ourselves be a conduit for passing energy. 
Of course, that Facebook post said it was a quote by Albert Einstein, which let's be honest, it probably wasn't, but it is still a powerful sentiment and has stuck with me forever. So here I wanted to kind of portray the hand of the artist where our character here is holding up a basin, i.e. a portal. And through this portal, we see the ethereal energy enter and be transmuted into three-dimensional reality, constrained by the limits of time and space. I implore you to look closer at the river flowing out of the portal. Let me know what you see in it. I'm gonna preserve the layers here and have the character, the basin and the background on their own separate layers. And after adding some cool finishing touches, here is the finished painting. Let's now go ahead and actually turn it into a print. Okay, first of all, I need to mention that this is not a sponsored video by Spring. I just feel like Spring is so convenient and has some cool features and that's the only reason I'm actually using it. But on their website, I found a link that leads to a whole bunch of templates. These are free to download and they're all PSD files, so I went ahead and grabbed the entire bunch. We probably won't make every single product on there, but it's nice to have the option. Also, I can't be bothered to download individual folders and then unzip each one, so I just got them all. Let's start with the all over print unisex t-shirt. So here's where I'm using some of my Sims 2 body shop knowledge. Do you guys remember? that stuff bro I made so much CC clothing and stuff and literally that is the only reason I can work Photoshop wow this video is full of tangents the point I'm trying to make is that these templates take a little bit of creative visualization because instead of having a straight up front and back they're divided into panels so you have your front torso panel your back torso panel a strap for the neck and two unfolded sleeves this is what makes up an all-over print t-shirt and the panels for other clothing and object templates will be different. Now what I have in mind for this t-shirt is to have the main art in front on the chest piece and then have the rest of it be the sky and the backgrounds and such. So it's gonna take a bit of extra painting but I'm basically gonna extend the background so that it covers the back, neck and sleeves with just a basic sky and clouds. We're gonna try and match the edges and colors to the front panel so that it looks seamless at the edges or as seamless as we can get. One last thing we're gonna do is throw in a logo on the back panel just for copyright sake. So finally, we're gonna check the PNG size because Spring only takes 50 MB. I had to convert this to a JPEG that killed me, but I didn't wanna lower the size because it would just worsen the quality. So I had to save it as a JPEG. I know it's a sin, I know I will repent. Um, <laughs> we need a decent resolution, so I'm gonna try and keep it at 300 DPI and hopefully that doesn't bloat the file size. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and speed run through an all over print hoodie. This one has a whole bunch of pieces, so we're gonna have to do a lot more cutting and copying. A lot of it is just duplicating layers, trial and error, and tons of visualization. Again, adding a logo on and exporting the PNG. I did a couple of other products too, but one last thing I wanna show you is the transparent PNG. For a regular front and back print, we're gonna need a version of this painting that can go over a plain solid color background. I'm actually going to do this by going into the original Critter document and this is the sole reason I preserved the layer structure for this document because now all we need to do is make the background invisible and most of our work is already done. I'm going to clean up some edges here and there and export this transparent background version of the painting as a PNG. Now, before I did that though, I did want to give this painting some kind of border, maybe a solid white stroke around the whole thing. So you could go ahead and use a stroke effect, but I'm actually gonna do something different. I'm gonna create a layer underneath the painted layer and actually use the Bezier Curve Select tool to create an even line around the edge of the painting, rounding and defining it in areas where things are a little more abstract or choppy. I then expanded the selection I pretty much eyeballed the width until it looked right and then 
to fill the selection with a flat color. Usually I go for white or black. In this case, I went for white. So now it looks kind of like a die cut sticker. I'm going to save this as a new PNG. I like to have these two variations with or without the border just to play around and see which one looks nicer on the actual t-shirt mock-up. And finally, when we have all of our files ready, I like to put the final images into a separate folder just so I don't go crazy trying to sift through a million different images and we're now going to go ahead and create the actual listing. This is where we need to learn how the spring design launcher actually works. Here is my spring dashboard. As you can see, I did get a couple of listings on there already just to test the whole thing out. Let's add a third to the list. I'm going to go to the create tab and it shows me a whole list of products to choose from. It doesn't really matter what you pick to start with because you can always go back and unselect it and then select a bunch of other products. However, I'm going to start with a men's classic tee. This takes us to step two, which is where we upload the actual art. Now when I go to the design tab it shows me a red rectangle on the center of the t-shirt. This is the area that the design will actually take up because this is a classic tee not an all over print one. We'll get to that one in just a second. For now I'm going to place the transparent background version of our painting right in the middle of the t-shirt and then test out a couple of color options. I'm not a huge fan of this design on black per se so we're going to stick to some of the pink the tones. You can also select a color option for the first image that buyers see and adjust the price here. I'm adjusting the EU price to be slightly lower than the US price because the euro is valued higher than the dollar. Next, let's check out the all over print tee because we've put in all of that work. Let's just see how it turns out. So in the design tab here, we'll see the weird like panel map because again, this one is going to have the print all over, not just on the chest panel like the classic tee. So I went ahead and adjusted the size and position so that each panel aligns perfectly. I don't know why the site was so laggy and the preview wouldn't load, but here's a clip of how it actually turned out looking. I then went ahead and added a couple of other products. One thing I should mention here is I could not for the life of me find the all over print hoodie. I don't know if they've discontinued it or if it's only available in certain locations, but all I found was the classic hoodies that can have like a single image up front. So that sucks because we spent all of that time creating the all over print hoodie. So yeah. Anyway, we then hit continue and fill out the title and description. I basically just copy pasted the description from the Patreon art post because to be honest, I know all of the traffic to this is going to come from you guys. But if you're relying on organic traffic from Google or something, you want to do some SEO and stuff. There's tons of videos on SEO out there. I'm not an expert on the topic, so I don't feel qualified to tell you how to do it. Anyway, so finally we hit publish. It was still laggy and glitchy. Honestly, it messed up my screen recording for some reason, but I paused and came back once the listing was live and there we go. There is our print. I love seeing my art on mockups because it really makes you feel like, damn, I really did that. I don't know, man. I feel like with digital art, you kind of lose that feeling of having a physical end product. So seeing digital art on a mockup like this makes me feel like a million times more accomplished. But yeah, check the prints out for yourselves. I'll leave a link in the video description and I hope you enjoyed this fun little adventure. So there we go. The print is now live on my spring shop. And if you guys are curious about how it turned out or how it looks in like the mock-ups, you can check it out. I will leave a link in the video description below. If you actually purchase a print, I will cry. So thank you in advance because I'm going to be incoherent. See, I severely underestimated how much work goes into turning a painting into like a print ready piece. So um, going through this process a couple of times already has made me respect 
respect people who create regular prints so much more than I already did. In either case though, I hope you guys have enjoyed this whole exploration of turning a painting into like a print ready format and if you have then please do let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below for more content every single week. Do you regularly turn your art into prints? Do you now want to having gone through this process with me? Let me know in a comment below. Alrighty you guys, with all of that said, thank you so so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and thank you so much for being so patient with me while I had to take some time away and deal with some family stuff. I really appreciate all the love and support but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Check out some more videos up here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.